Hey guys, so we are just a few days away from finding out who the 2022 Oscar winners are going to be. So it's time for me to give you my final, final, final predictions for all 23 of the Oscar categories. Some I'm feeling confident on, some I'm absolutely torn on. Also, I will be doing a live stream of the Oscars on Sunday night. So if you want to watch the Oscars along with me and see my reactions as they happen, the link to the live stream is in the video description down below. If you're a fan of award season, as well as movies, TV, and popcorn culture, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit the like button, and you can also help my channel out by leaving me a comment on this video with some of your predictions for this year's Oscars. It's those interactions with you guys that make it all the worthwhile for me because I love hearing from you guys. It's always interesting hearing people's opinions on Oscar season. Anyway, enough chit chat, let's get to it. Gonna jump right in with Best Actress. This has been one of the more chaotic categories this year. It's been very up and down this award season, but the last few precursors have given us a clearer picture as to who we can expect to see win. I'm still going with Jessica Chastain with the eyes of Tammy Faye. I've discussed in depth in my deep dive video on this category the reasons why I think it's going to be her. So if you want the full scoop on why I think it's gonna be Jessica Chastain, you can check out that video, I'll pop a link up here. But yeah, I think this is Jessica Chastain's time. This is her third nomination. She hasn't won prior. She's well respected in the industry. And yeah, she has the SAG and Critics' Choice win. That's probably enough to get her across the finish line. I'm not 100% confident on it. If there were to be a surprise in any of the four acting categories, I do think it would be Best Actress. Could a surprise be brewing? Could Kristen Stewart or Penelope Cruz manage to pull off a surprise win and break that rule that says you can only win Best Actress if you have a SAG nomination? Neither of them two have it. And if there is a year for it to happen, it would be this year because it's pretty level playing field. Like, none of the Best Actress nominees are up for Best Picture. No one has that boost from having their film being a Best Picture nominee. I've said time and time again on my channel that I am Team Kristen Stewart. She is who I want to see win the most. She is who I'm rooting for. But the fact that she's the sole nomination for Spencer makes me think this isn't her year. In the past, being the sole nominee for your film in Best Actress hasn't been enough to clinch it. Didn't happen for Glenn Close, didn't happen for Andrew Day last year, and they both had a precursor win under their belt. Kristen Stewart doesn't have any. Kristen Stewart is my number one wish fulfillment fantasy pick. She is the person I want to see win the most out of any of the categories this year. So if she does win, prepare for the reaction freak out of your life. The evidence does suggest it's probably going to be Jessica Chastain, so I'm sticking with her, and I'm gonna be happy for her if she does win. I think it is still a phenomenal performance. She's got the SAG and Critics' Choice. She's slightly overdue, and the Eyes of Tammy Faye was a passion project of hers for 10 years, so the Academy will probably want to honor her for that. Next up, we have Best Actor, and I am very confident it's going to be Will Smith. Again, I've done a deep dive on this category. If you want to see my full thoughts on all the nominees, check out the link up here. But yeah, it's a pretty assured prediction. He has swept throughout award season. He got the National Board of Review, Critics' Choice, Golden Globe, SAG, and BAFTA. It does feel like it's his time. He's had a very good year with his memoir coming out. He produced the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reboot, and he also had that docuseries about the planet on Disney+, Plus, and obviously King Richard. So yeah, he's been busy, and he is a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. Also, when it comes to Best Actor, in the last decade, the Academy has shown a preference for actors playing real-life people over, say, fictional characters. In the last 11 years, seven out of the 11 times, Best Actor has gone to someone playing a real-life person. So that does give Will Smith a slight advantage because he is playing a real life person. With that, you can also make the argument that Andrew Garfield could surprise here for playing Jonathan Larson. But yeah, I'm still pretty confident it's gonna be Will Smith. Academy Award winner, Will Smith. Let's make it happen. Best Supporting Actress, no contest. It's gonna be Ariana DeBose, West Side Story. I have done a deep dive video on this category if you want my full thoughts, but it's kind of obvious it's gonna be Ariana DeBose, guys. It's probably gonna be West Side Story's only win of the night, but yeah, it's hers. Like she has been sweeping this award season. And yeah, there's something poetic about Ariana DeBose winning an Oscar 60 years after her co-star Rita Marino won for playing the same role. So yeah, it's gonna be Ariana DeBose. At this point, I would be gobsmacked if it wasn't. But also, playing devil's advocate for a second, how cool would it be if we had two openly queer women, Ariana DeBose and Kristen Stewart, as the two winners of the female acting categories this year? That would be so awesome. That'd be some history-making stuff right there. Best Supporting Actor. Troy Kotzer, Coda, it's really obvious now. Troy Kotzer continues to steal all of our hearts this award season. Everybody loves him. Give him the Oscar, give him the James Bond role for that matter. Cody Smith-McPhee did give him a decent run, but 
With the Academy, they do tend to go with the older nominees when it comes to the male acting categories. So it's Troy Kotz's time. I'm sure Cody Smith and Fee will have more nominations in the future. One thing to take away from the acting categories this year is that if Kristen Stewart does manage to pull off a surprise win for Best Actress, then we might be looking at the most diverse set of winners that we've ever seen in the four acting categories ever, because we'll have Will Smith, the fifth black man ever to win Best Actor in a Leading Role. We'd have Troy Kotzer, the first deaf man to win a competitive acting Oscar ever. We'd have Ariana DeBose, the first Afro-Latino and openly queer woman to win Supporting Actress ever. And then we'd also have Kristen Stewart, the first openly queer woman to win Best Actress ever, period. How cool would that be? But I do think it's asking a lot of the Academy. I don't think it's going to happen, but we can dream, can't we? <laughs> it would be awfully generous of the Academy to give us that outcome, but hey, you never know. But also, if I am correct in my acting Oscar predictions, Smith, Chastain, DeBose, and Kotzer, this will be the first time since 2017 that it's all first time winners in all four of the acting categories. Just a little fun fact for you there, guys. Next up, we have Best Original Screenplay, and this one has been giving me stomach aches. This category has kind of been shaping up to be the battle of the overdue duo. You've got Kenneth Branagh with Belfast and Paul Thomas Anderson with Licorice Pizza, and these two are both men who've been heavily nominated at the Academy Award previously and still haven't won. Kenneth Branagh has had eight nominations and Paul Thomas Anderson the, is now 11 nominations. No wins apiece and they both have a chance to win this year. And they're kind of head to head in the screenplay category. So it's, it seems like it's coming down to these two and I'm honestly so torn on this one. They both have the same narrative, but who has the edge? It's really hard to tell because Belfast won Golden Globe and the Critics' Choice, but Licorice Pizza won the BAFTA. Green Book managed to win the Best Original Screenplay Oscar with only a Golden Globe win. Can Belfast follow suit? I don't know. <laughs> I've noticed in the past decade or so, when it comes to Best Original Screenplay, the Academy have gone for the cooler picks, like with Get Out, Parasite and Promising Young Woman. And Licorice Pizza is definitely the cooler pick compared to Belfast. But Belfast has more nominations than Licorice Pizza. It's seven for Belfast, three for Licorice Pizza. And it's a more sappier film. So really it's sentimentality versus coolness. All right, let me play devil's advocate again for a minute because the race between Branner and Anderson is so, so close. What if the Academy choose not to give it to either of the overdue chaps? What if those two end up splitting votes because it's so close, and then the film that does have a passionate fan base manages to sneak up and overtake them? Like, Hypothetically, Joachim Trier and Eskiel Vot's screenplay for The Worst Person in the World, which was one of my favorite films. Actually, it was my favorite film of 2021. And if you ask me, it is the best original screenplay of the year. In fact, it's one of the best screenplays of the year, period. The Worst Person in the World isn't gonna win international feature, but it does have its supporters and it could surprise in best original screenplay. And it would be really nice to see it win an Oscar because it was my number one film of 2021. And again, coming back to that whole cool argument, if they wanna go for the coolest pick this year, then the worst person in the world is by far the coolest choice, even more so than Licorice Pizza. But that's just me letting my emotional favoritism of the film get in the way of the actual race. What's holding me back from picking Worst Person in the World is that it only got two nominations, Screenplay and Best International Feature. Have enough voters seen The Worst Person in the World and fallen in love with it like so many of us have? Belfast has seven nominations, okay? People will be watching it and it does have its fans and I think they will want to honor it somewhere and Screenplay seems like the best place 
for them to do that. I can see an outcome where Belfast goes home empty-handed. Like it could be the color purple, American Hustle, or the Irishman of this year. That would be so sad because for the longest time it was considered like the Oscar frontrunner in so many categories. But I do think they will honor it. And yeah, I think they're gonna give it best original screenplay. I don't want them to give it to Belfast. I would much rather see the worst person in the world win it. But yeah, I think they're gonna go with sentimentality and it does have the Critics' Choice win and the Golden Globe win. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Belfast for original screenplay. Best adapted screenplay. This one isn't as stress inducing as best original screenplay, but it's definitely not a gimme because for the longest time, I thought Jane Campion was a sure thing for this category for the screenplay for The Power of the Dog. However, the tide has appeared to have turned because Coda managed to win the BAFTA for Best Adapted Screenplay and it also took home WGA. The father last year took the BAFTA and then took the Oscar and I think Coda is going to do the same. Jane Campion at this point would actually be a surprise if her name is called out and it could happen but I'm going to go with Sean Heater for Coda. Costume Design! Jenny Bevan for Cruella, Nuff said. The entire film is a two hour fashion show. Production design. This is a tough one because the Art Directors Guild went with Dune for Fantasy and Nightmare Alley for Period. Critics' Choice and BAFTA both gave it to Dune, which does give Dune an advantage going into Oscars night. However, I've noticed the past few years that the Academy does like to spread the love around with the Best Picture nominees. Typically, they like to try and give every Best Picture nominee at least one win. I mean, unless of course you're the Irishman. And if I were an Oscar voter and I was looking at my ballot and I had already ticked Dune for score, sound, visual effects, cinematography, and editing, part of me would go, do I also give it production design as well? Or should I share the love around by giving it to somebody else? And in this situation, Nightmare Alley is the clear challenger to Dune. And part of me can't shake the feeling that they're going to want to try honor some other Best Picture nominees where they can. So I'm kind of leaning towards Nightmare Alley. Guillermo del Toro's films are known for world building and the sets are a huge part of that. And to me, there's something more tangible about the sets in Nightmare Alley than there is in Dune. They feel more lived in, especially that carnival set. It's so good to the point where it feels immersive. It feels like you're there. And the Academy does really respond to the theatricality of the art direction in Guillermo del Toro's films. Pan's Labyrinth won, The Shape of Water won. So I'm taking a chance on this category and I'm gonna say production design is gonna go to Nightmare Alley. It's definitely my wild card prediction this year, but that's a good question for you guys. What's your wild card prediction this year for predicting the Oscars? You know, that prediction where you're taking a gamble on it, but you can just feel something in your gut. Whatever it is, let me know in the comment section down below. Cinematography. Let me start by saying that no matter who wins in this category, I'm gonna be happy because the quality of the work in this category this year is Cinematography this year really is like the best of the best of what 2021 had to offer. My personal pick is still Bruno Delvinel for The Tragedy of Macbeth. And while I do think there is a chance he could surprise here because the Academy has shown love for black and white films recently with Roma and Mank winning just last year. I still think they're going to go with Dune because Greg Frazier is really having a moment at the moment because the Batman just came out well, a few weeks ago and everyone's just like jaw droppingly stunned by the work there. And it's the same with Dune. It's such majestic, epic cinematography. It's just impossible to ignore. So yeah, I think they're gonna give it to Greg, Greg Frazier. I think they're gonna give him his first ever Oscar. But if Bruno Delbanel does win, I will be kicking myself. It's the type of prediction that I wish I had the guts to follow through on and actually pick it, but I just can't because there's not enough evidence to suggest it's gonna win, but there's still a part of me that thinks it could just surprise here, and I'm not listening to the gut feeling, and that's just, oh, you should always go with that gut feeling. Next up is editing. Honest to God, this might actually be the toughest category this year. I have been flipping and flopping. We all thought that Best Actress was the most chaotic race this season, but really, it's editing. 
Honestly, I've got no clue what's going on. It's all over the place, this race, because BAFTA gave it to No Time To Die. It's not here at the Oscars. Critics' Choice gave it to West Side Story, not at the Oscars. And with Ace, they gave it to King Richard for Dramatic and Tick Tick Boom for Comedy. And they're both here in the Oscars race, along with Dune, Don't Look Up, and The Power of the Dog. So you've got two heavily nominated heavy hitters this year, Dune and The Power of the Dog. And you've also got the film with the most zany, over-the-top editing with Don't Look Up. Grrr! For the longest time, I thought it was going to be Dune because the Academy do like to pair editing with the film that wins sound. It happened last year with The Sound of Metal. Plus, Dune seemed poised to win this so early on, but what makes it less assured is that it hasn't performed well over award season. I think Dune will be the biggest winner of the night. It could get between four and six wins, I think. Question is, which categories aren't a given for Dune? I think editing is where it's vulnerable, that and production design. Will they give it to Dune despite its lack of a precursor win? Honestly, it's tough to go against Doom because it's definitely gonna win sound. Normally I like to go with that whole saying that the film with the most editing will win at the Oscars, but with this particular bunch of nominees, I'm not sure which one that saying applies to best. Dune has the grandest, most majestic editing. It's probably the most ambitious of the bunch, I'd say. King Richard has the electrifying tennis court sequences. Tick Tick Boom has the therapy sequence. Wow. Don't Look Up is obviously an Adam McKay film, so it has that hyperactive, fast-paced editing. It's very flashy. And then there's The Power of the Dog, which has the most subtle editing, but often the Academy don't go for subtlety. I'm having a gut feeling about Tick Tick Boom, which probably isn't wise because it's the only nominee in the best editing category, which doesn't have a best picture nomination. However, the therapy sequence, I can't stop thinking about. It's just so damn good. If that's the clip that Netflix is sending out to voters, that might actually be enough to get people to vote for Tick Tick Boom. Cause it's editing in action. There's lots of fast cuts, overlapping narrative threads, and it builds to a very exciting crescendo. It's editing at its most visible, and it's supremely well done. It's kind of how Bohemian Rhapsody won Best Editing a few years ago, because the Live Aid sequence was the clip that they sent out for people to watch. And because that sequence was so well done, even though the rest of the editing in the film was trash, that gave it the win. So a good clip of editing can make a world of difference. But I'm more hesitant about picking Tick Tick Boom for the same reason as Bohemian Rhapsody, because one, Bohemian Rhapsody got a Best Picture nomination, Tick Tick Boom didn't, and two, Bohemian Rhapsody won both of the Sound Awards. Tick Tick Boom isn't even nominated for the Sound Award. So while I think Tick Tick Boom is a better example of the editing that the Academy likes and also did win the Ace Award, Dune is a Best Picture nominee and it's probably gonna win Sound and sound and editing usually go hand in hand. Oh, my, my gut is telling me to go for Tick Tick Boom but my head is telling me to go for Dune. So, who do I listen to? Oh, I'm gonna stick with my original thought and stay with Dune for editing. But if it does go to Tick Tick Boom, I am going to be furious with myself for not listening to my gut. But yeah, I'm sticking with Dune. What about you guys? Who are you predicting is gonna win best editing? Let me know in that comment section below. Makeup and hair. This was a category I was a little bit nervous about for a while, but it does seem to have cleared up now because the eyes of Tammy Faye won the BAFTA and the Critics' Choice. That's enough for me to feel pretty confident on it taking the Oscar. It's also the transformative prosthetics makeup that the Academy has you know, really liked the past few years with Darkest Hour, Vice, Bombshell, all winning. So yeah, the eyes of Tammy Faye fits the bill. I think they're gonna go with it. Plus, it will make a nice pairing if Jessica Chastain does win Best Actress. They do like to pair Best Actress and Makeup and Hair together quite often with Marion Cotillard, Charlize Theron, Meryl Streep. So Jessica Chastain might be the same. Visual effects, Dune, done. Sound, Dune, done. Score, Dune, not done. <laughs>
Hans Zimmer is coming for his second Oscar. It's actually kind of bonkers that this will only be his second ever Oscar win after The Lion King. The man has given us some of the most iconic scores of all time with Pirates of the Caribbean, Inception, and Interstellar. So yeah, Zimmer is way overdue for another win, and the score for Dune absolutely slaps. It's one of his all-time best. The man managed to make bagpipes sound also, all right, give the man his trophy. Best original song, oh my God, we actually have a race now. Best song for the longest time has felt like it's always gonna be going to No Time To Die, but with the runaway success of the Encanto soundtrack, there's actually a credible chance that Lin-Manuel Miranda could surprise here and win for Dos Araguitas. Could he sneak up at the last moment and snatch the Oscar away from Billie Eilish? This is another one like editing where I ping pong back and forth. The thing is, Disney really screwed up in this category because they submitted Dos Araguitas for best original song when they didn't realize how good of a thing they had with We Don't Talk About Bruno, which has just become this huge cultural phenomenon, this song. And yet if they had submitted We Need To Talk About, We Don't Talk About Bruno, then, this would be a done deal. This would obviously be going to Lin-Manuel Miranda, but they didn't. They went with Dos Araguitas. So do they give Lin-Manuel Miranda the win for Dos Araguitas, even though we don't talk about Bruno, is what's in the zeitgeist at the moment? I, I don't know. It's, it's Does Dos Araguitas win by proxy being related to, we don't talk, sorry, we don't talk about Bruno, gosh. Will they give Dos Araguitas the win, even though it's not the best song on the soundtrack, just because it's Encanto and the soundtrack is having a moment culturally? They might just do that. This is actually a really tough one to call because ordinarily Disney songs do very well at the Oscars, but in the last few years, the last two Bond songs that were nominated both won. So there's kind of a new trend there. But is twice a coincidence, three times a pattern with the Bond songs? But honestly, I'm not sure. Like, Disney or Bond? Urgh. No Time to Die has more wins under its belt. Got Critics' Choice and a Grammy. So logic dictates that Billy continues her streak, but Lin-Manuel Miranda has a narrative and it's a narrative that the Academy is very aware of. That is that if they give the Oscar to him, then Lin-Manuel, I can't say his name, Lin-Manuel Miranda has everything he needs to complete his EGOTs then. He's got the Emmy, the Oscar, the Tony, and the Grammy. And he joins a very exclusive club. He'll be the 17th person ever to join that very exclusive club. Do they want to do that now for a lesser song from the Encanto soundtrack when we don't talk about Bruno and Service Pressure was right there, but they went with Dos Araguitas. Mm, I don't know. It's like, it's narrative versus um, track record. So it's tough, it's tough to call guys. Part of me also thinks that more Academy members will have heard of Lin-Manuel Miranda because this is his second Oscar nomination. He got one for How Far I'll Go for Moana. Whereas Billie Eilish, she's, you know, Gen Z. How, how many of the oldest Coffee Academy members know who she is? Are they gonna wanna celebrate her? But yeah, also, they, they're probably gonna wanna honor No Time To Die somewhere. Oh! So yeah, there's a little bit of an argument there to be made that because this is Lin-Manuel Miranda's second nomination and that he's a little bit more seasoned, they might feel like he's more deserving than Billie Eilish. And let's not forget that Lin-Manuel Miranda has had a phenomenal year. He has put out so much stuff. In the Heights, Vivo, Encanto, he directed Tick, Tick, Boom. He has given so much to cinema in the past 12 months. And I can see the Academy wanting to give him an Oscar for that collective body of work that he's put out this year as a reward for all the hard work that he's done. Not just for the song, which is a lovely song. Not the best off the Encanto soundtrack, but it is a lovely song. And they might just say, you know what? You've done a good job this year. We've seen all the hard work you've done. Here's, here's an Oscar, take it, it's yours, friend. I can see it going that way. Honestly, if it had been, we need to talk about Bruno, then I would be assured this would be Lin-Manuel Miranda's to take it. But it's not, it's Dos Araguitas versus No Time To Die. And so I really am torn, guys. It is hard. It's narrative versus track record. Eilish has the track record and Lin-Manuel Miranda has the narrative, but Encanto, has been peaking at the right time. It's probably more fresh in the Academy's minds, and it's Disney. I'm going to go with track record on this one. I'm saying it's gonna go to Billie Eilish for No Time To Die. I am not sure on this. 
It honestly could go the, to Dossoriguidas, but I'm gonna stick with No Time to Die just based off stats. Yeah, and I think the stats will be out the narrative this year. Yeah, so Billie Eilish, Phineas, No Time to Die. Oh, don't feel good about it, guys. Don't feel good. Best animated short, Robin Robin. It's Netflix, it's Ardman, it's about animals, it's cute. What more do you need? Best documentary short, I'm actually having a pretty tough time with this one. I'm torn between three on this one. I can see it going to When We Were Bullies, Audible, or The Queen of Basketball. Honestly, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm really divided on this one as well, but... Gun in my head, I'm gonna go with Audible. Best live action short, I'm gonna go with The Long Goodbye, just cause Riz. <laughs> Animated feature, it's most likely gonna go to Encanto. It's really been peaking at the right time and the success of the soundtrack is obviously giving it a boost as well. Could the Mitchells versus the Machines challenge it here? Because it did win the Annie Award and the Critics' Choice, that's something. But I don't know, it's hard to go against Disney because Disney's track record in this category really speaks for itself. And while you can make the argument that people do love the Mitchells in the same way that they love Spider-Man versus Into the Spider-Verse, I don't think the Mitchells versus the Machines has the same out love support that Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse has. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with Encanto for this one. Documentary feature, I'm going with Summer of Soul. I was kind of hoping Flea would surprise at the BAFTA, but no, it went to Summer of Soul, so I'm sticking with it. Could Flea still surprise here? I would love to see it happen because I really do love Flea and it is nominated in three categories, uh, documentary, foreign language, and uh, animated feature. And if it was to show up anywhere, it would probably be documentary feature, but I'm going with Summer of Soul. It seems like the most obvious pick. It won the Producers Guild Award and BAFTA. International feature, I yield. It's not going to the worst person in the world, even though I really, really wanted to, and I think it should go to the worst person in the world. But no, it's going to drive my car. It's won pretty much every trophy conceivable. And yeah, it's the only film in this category that's also in the best picture. You don't vote against a film when it's in best picture as well. It, it's a gimme at this point. It's driving my car. Directing. This is a pretty easy one. I still think it's gonna go to Jane Campion. This is the only category that I feel confident the Power of the Dog is going to win. A few months ago, I had the Power of the Dog winning like four awards. Now, I have it just winning one, but it could maybe surprise with two or three, we'll see. But yeah, Jane Campion seems like an assured prediction. She won the BAFTA, the Golden Globe, the Critics' Choice. She also won the Director's Guild Award and only eight times in 72, 72 years has the Director's Guild Award not matched up with the Best Director at the Oscars. So yeah, Jane Campion. And Jane Campion will be the third woman in history to win Best Director at the Oscars, joining Catherine Bigelow and Chloe Zhao, who won just last year. Back-to-back -back female winners, it's also pretty cool. That's a little bit of history there. And last, but by certainly no means least, we have Best Picture. And this one got interesting. The long-presumed frontrunner, The Power of the Dog, now has a challenger. That's right, with Coda's SAG Ensemble win and the Producers Guild Award, it is definitely a legit contender to win Best Picture. It's a race, guys. Like, honestly, I could go see it going either way because Coda does have SAG Ensemble and Producers Guild Award, but Power of the Dog does have BAFTA and Critics' Choice and Golden Globe. Which way is it gonna go? I asked you guys on Twitter, who do you think is gonna win Best Picture and the Oscars? And you guys were absolutely no help because both The Power of the Dog and Coda got 48% apiece, whereas some 4% of you voted for something else to win. So yeah, people are really split on The Power of the Dog versus Coda, and it's kind of given us this interesting race because for one, it's the battle of two female filmmakers, okay, Jane Campion versus Sean Heater, but also it's the battle of streamers because you've got Jane Campion's Power of the Dog with Netflix and you've got Sean Heater's Coda with Apple TV. So yes, it's, it's, it's a really interesting race at the moment as well. And also you can sort of judge it as like the artistic, film, you know, the psycho drama western Power of the Dog versus the feel-good little indie movie that could dramedy Coda. Like, it's, it's it's art versus entertainment battle. It's, it's a really interesting race. I'm so here for it. And because of this, it has opened a lot of really interesting discourse on film Twitter. Like, 
already there has been some backlash to the idea of Coda winning Best Picture, which is ridiculous. Normally a film has to win Best Picture before it receives backlash, but Coda's getting it preemptively. And it's Coda, the sweet, heartwarming, crowd-pleasing film of 2021 is getting hate because a lot of people don't view it as artistic enough to win Best Picture or worthy enough as a Best Picture winner. They're comparing it to like Green Bug and Crash for God's sakes, yikes! And can I just say to all those that are publicly disparaging Coda right now, all you're doing is helping it because you're just making it seem more and more like an underdog and everybody loves an underdog. So if it does managed to win Best Picture at the Oscars, it's going to be even more cathartic because it's always satisfying to see an underdog prove the naysayers wrong. But who do I think is going to win Best Picture? At the moment, I am currently leaning more towards Coda because it really does feel like it's peaking at the right time. And also, the combined wins of SAG Ensemble and the Producers Guild Award is too substantial to ignore because since 2009 when the Oscars installed the preferential ballot system which is what the Producers Guild Awards uses to decide best film, the best picture at the Producers Guild Award has matched at the Oscars nine times out of 12. That is a, that's a very good overlap. I've made no secret on my channel that I've never been in love with The Power of the Dog overall. It's a film that I respect but don't love. So part of me is wondering, am I allowing my, you know, biasness for Coda affect my judgment on who's gonna win Best Picture? And maybe it is occurring a little bit because part of me really does wanna see Coda win. It's definitely my preferred choice, but there's enough evidence to suggest that the wind is blowing in a different direction now in Coda's sails. It's giving it that last minute boost that it needs to get across the finish line. And the thing is, with the power of the dog, I'm not the only one that is in love with it, okay? There are plenty of people I've spoken to who have said like, oh, it's fine. They're not head over heels for it. They can appreciate the merits and the qualities of it. But I've always thought The Power of the Dog was gonna be a film that didn't actually do as well on a preferential ballot as everyone thought it was going to be because there are people like me who just saw it as okay. I've got four or five other Best Picture nominees above The Power of the Dog in on what, how I would fill out the preferential ballot. Whereas Coda, a heartwarming, crowd-pleasing, accessible, lovely film, I can see just scoring quite high. Maybe not everyone's ones and twos, but getting a lot of threes and fours and just sort of placing in the upper bracket more often than not. So yeah, Coda, it just feels more like the safer, option on a preferential ballot. That's just how I view it. And don't get me wrong, if The Power of the Dog does win, I'll still be happy for it. And I do think it is a deserved win because the craftsmanship in The Power of the Dog is undisputably amazing. Like it is a very well-made film. It's just not a film that I emotionally gelled with in the same way that I did with Coda. But it did still get the most Oscar nominations. It got 12. So it could still pull off a win here. Slinky Dog on YouTube pointed something out to me that I hadn't noticed before, which is that if Coda does win Best Picture at the Oscars, it will only be the second film in Oscars history to win Best Picture without at least a nomination at the Directors Guild Award. The last time it happened was apparently for Driving Miss Daisy back in 1989. And Timothy Chalamet's Stan account asks me on YouTube, can Coda win Best Picture without an editing nom? That is a good question because normally at the Oscars, you need an editing nomination in order to win Best Picture, okay? Winning Best Picture without an editing nom is like a Q without a U. Not often seen, but it can happen. Only 10 times in Oscars history has a Best Picture winner won without at least an editing nomination also. The last time it happened was Birdman. And also another reason why I think they might go with Coda is because after two years of a global pandemic and living in such depressing times, I can see the Academy gravitating more towards a feel-good film which the power of the dog is the furthest thing from. Like we go to the movies to escape our troubles 
And that's exactly what Coda gives the viewer. It's a warm, comforting, cozy, easy viewing, heartwarming watch. It's, it's uplifting and it's joyful. And I can see them voting with their hearts this year. I can see it going to Coda for that reason. So yeah, I still think it is a race between the Power of the Dog and Coda. However, there's enough late surge precursor wins of the SAG Ensemble and Producers Guild Award to make me think that this is Coda's time now. So yes, my prediction for the 2022 best picture at the Oscars will be Coda. Thank you guys. Those are my predictions for the 2022 Academy Awards. But as always guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. I wanna hear from you guys. What are your predictions for the Oscars this year? Let your voice be heard in that comment section down below. Love hearing from you guys. Remember, I've got the live stream of the Oscars on Sunday. If you want to watch along with us, that link is in the video description. If you've enjoyed the video, help me out by hitting the like button. And if you want more Oscars, movie, TV, and popcorn culture content, don't forget to click subscribe. And if you want to follow me on any of my socials, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, it's all in that video description down below. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.